All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to machine the inside of our part. So the inside area here. Let me go ahead and open up the SolidWorks model so I can show you what I'm going to be machining. And basically, it's this area that I have selected right there. So as you can see, this area has a little open place, and we're going to use that. We're going to utilize that to make sure that the tool enters over here. So it's not digging in with a helix radius like we usually do, but it'll come in from the outside, starts digging into your part. Okay. Now, one very important aspect I want to to show is that the radius in here, this corner and this corner. Now we are going to be using a one inch flat end mill, which you might say, okay, well that's a half an inch radius. So it should work over here and it should machine this radius for us, but it's not going to work. That's because this is the half an inch radius. This is an offset of the half an inch radius to the inside of it. So that radius is going to become smaller. So you'll see when we create our tool path that it was, it's going to miss some material over here and we're going to have to come back. And we're going to be using the dynamic contour operation, 2D high-speed toolpath dynamic contour to machine the rest of the area. So I'm going to zoom out back, uh, back out and let's go ahead and create our toolpath. So go to toolpath, 2D high-speed, dynamic mill. For the machining region, go ahead and select this uh, chain right here. And that's why we've separated the geometry to, from the bottom from this chain. It's because we wanted to start it right here and make sure it ends over here, not all the way through. Otherwise, it would have connected an entire chain all the way through. All right, so go ahead and select OK. Make sure you have from outside selected because I want my tool to come in from the outside towards the inside of my part. Make sure to change the open chain extension stock to change it. If you leave it at none, the stock will come in with a helix radius and start digging into your part. When you leave it at tangent, the, the, the part, the tool will start from the outside digging into your part and we'll utilize more of that tool. So make sure you change that. And lastly, for the avoidance region, I'm going to zoom out real quick after I select it. I'm going to select this and this. So make sure this entire chain is selected. It's in two pieces, so make sure you have this entire chain selected. And the only reason it really it's in two pieces, that's because we created point systems over here, so it automatically separates them into two pieces. So go ahead and select OK. So make sure you have one machining region selected from the outside, tangent, and one avoidance region selected, and select OK. All right, so let's go all the way back up top, top to the tool. Make sure you have one inch flat end mill selected, and type in 2D high speed toolpath dynamic mill inside. For the holder, we're going to keep it the same. Let's go to cut parameters. Now, cut parameters, we're going to leave this the same. The only thing to make sure is to leave stock to leave on the walls is zero and to leave on the floor is zero. We're going to utilize the entire flu length and starts machining right away from the outside. Depth cut, we're going to leave that as off because we're utilizing the entire length of the flute. We don't need to have any depth cuts. Entry motion, leave it at helix only and a quarter of an inch. You can actually make this a little bit bigger if you like, but maybe up to the half the size of the uh, diameter of the tool, which is 0.5, but I like to leave it at 0.25, still a little bit smaller. For the rest material, we're going to leave that as off, and I'll show you why. Now, there's I can come back in and machine this with another tool if I like to, using the rest material, but I'm going to use a dynamic counter operation uh, to show you in our next video. We're not going to be breaking through. Remember, because we've already done a 2D dynamic high-speed mill, it copies all the features from there to the next one. So just make sure you turn that off. And for the linking parameters, make sure you change the depth to negative 0.8. All right, and I'm going to turn on coolant over here. If you don't have it turned on, make sure it's on. Select apply and select OK. I'm going to zoom out real quick so I can explain the toolpath a little bit. And as you see, your tool is going to come in right here and it's going to start doing these little uh, maneuvers, free flowing maneuvers, cutting from the outside towards the inside of your part. Now it's going to do both sides over here and then it's going to move up. And that's because it can't possibly go because it's a one inch radius. It can't possibly go into these areas so it comes back out and starts going in to that part of the uh, that part of the uh, that area of the part and starts machining this area now if i place this in isometric view you're going to see that the tool comes into here as well so it's going to come in from this side when it's done it's going to come out come out come in from this side and machine your part let's go ahead and see that so i'm going to select both of my tool path and select verify I'm going to select isometric and fit the screen and select 
play. So first it's gonna just create my outer boundary and then I'm gonna slow it down when it's about done. So there you go. So now it's gonna come in as you can see it's doing these free flow motions, dynamic mill, and it's machining the inside area of your part. And I'll speed that up a little bit. So it's gonna create it's gonna go to the left side first and then it goes to the right side. And then it comes out and it comes in in a helix motion all the way down, as you can see. And then it machines the rest. Now if you look very closely, I'm going to place this back into the top view. There's material left over here to machine. And there's material left over here to machine. And not just that, if you look very closely, it didn't quite clean up your, your tools, your uh, path a lot, uh, very well. There's some material over here, for example. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and there may be other material all around your contour so all around this wall it didn't quite clean it up and that's the one thing about uh, machining with 2d high-speed dynamic mill especially inside pockets that it will leave some sometimes some material there and it's really nice to go back in with a 2d high-speed dynamic counter operation and basically just basically takes the tool and runs it around the wall clean it up all whatever's left over so if there's any birds anything anything left over for example this and that so remember those two features i'm going to come back in the next video and create a 2d high speed dynamic counter operation to clean that up